Shalom everyone, here we are again, coming to you live from the holy city of Jerusalem, Israel's capital. We are in the very center of the earth, according to Ezekiel chapter 5, in verse number 5. We are in the city that Jesus said in Matthew 5.35, Jerusalem, Ur, Agadol, Kamelach, Jerusalem the city of the great king. We are in the holy city of Jerusalem. And folks, we had another prosperous day out here in the land of Israel. I know that many of you are coming into the room right now, like Liz Talbot. Liz, it's great to have you with us. Bobby Bonner is with us. Michael Popes, Deborah Wyatt. We have Jean. Uh, Titus with us. We have Judy Varvel Young, the wife of Dr. Jimmy B. Young. Steve Leslie is also with us. Robin Frazier, a member of our church, Greater Rhode Island Baptist Temple, Johnston, Rhode Island. Robert Ash, he pastors a church in North Carolina. Robert, we're going to be in North Carolina. Once we get back from Israel, we have two days home, and then we're going off to North Carolina. Well, I'll be preaching at a couple of churches out there. So um, hopefully you might be able to show up uh, to those chur churches there for our prophecy conference. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, Mike says, I'm here, bro. Michael, good to see you, brother. We also have Leo McElroy and Stephen Mitch Smith. Guys, it's great to have all of you with us in the room today as we are here in the holy city of Jerusalem, the city of the great king. Of course, the city, 2 Chronicles 6, 6, that God says, I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there forever. And God's name is in the city, and it will be in here forever, which is the Hebrew word, olam. And so we just had a, a great time today um, sharing the word of God. We had a great time today passing out uh, complete Hebrew Bibles. Now, we ran out of Bibles, as I told you yesterday. Uh, I only brought 12 complete Hebrew Bibles with me. When I say complete Hebrew Bibles, I'm talking uh, a Hebrew Bible that has Torah, Nevi'im, Ketubim, Bari, Hadashah. The Law of the Prophets, the Writings, and the New Covenant of the New Testament. A complete Bible. So we ran out of Bibles. I only brought 12 of them because we're only here for about 10 days. Nine, technically. And so when we got into Jerusalem, I said we have to go to Christ Church in Jerusalem, in the old city. So we ended up going to Christ Church. I just walked right in. They have complete Hebrew Bibles just for the taking. They're free. So we took five of them with us because we're leaving on Tuesday. Tomorrow, Monday, is going to be our last day here in Israel. And so we went to the Malka Mall in Jerusalem. And we went into stores in the mall. And uh, we had the opportunity to pass out three of those Bibles. And uh, I actually have the names of the individuals uh, here. And of course, we've been posting their pictures on Facebook. And so let me see if I can get it. This thing's like pretty crunched up here. Here we go. So we went into the uh, Laleen Body Shop in one of the malls. You know, they sell lotions and creams and and all that stuff. So we went in, and the lady that was working behind the counter, a Jewish lady, her name is Moore, M-O-O-R. Or if you spell it in Hebrew, it's Mem Vav Rish, with a little dot between the vowel to make it sound more. So we ended up going in, made a little small talk, and then I uh, proceeded to share the gospel with her. 
Anders Ekman, good to see you in the room, buddy. Anders is in Israel right now. He's in Tiberias, and now I'm in Jerusalem. When I was in Tiberias, he was in Jerusalem. Now he's in Tiberias. We're over here in Jerusalem. So Anders, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to cross paths here in Israel this time, but hopefully, Lord willing, uh, next time we'll be able to do so. Anyway, we started to share the gospel with more and share the messianic prophecies. In the Old Testament, that point to Jesus as their fulfillment. And then I asked if I could give her a Bible, and she said, absolutely. And so we gave her that Bible, told her to read those Messianic prophecies that we shared with her, and then line up those Messianic prophecies with the, um, with the fulfillment there in the New Testament. And uh, she said that she is going to do that, and she thanked us for coming in and giving her that Bible. So then we uh, we proceeded to go on uh, in the mall, and we ended up uh, meeting this Arab lady. She worked in a store called Borderline. They sell like men's swimming trunks and you know swimming gear and all that stuff. And so my wife and I went in there, started talking with her. And, uh, you know, she said that she was an Arab Christian. And we hear that a lot when we come out here. But, you know, when you begin to question them on you know, whether they know the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior, or if they were to die today, do they know for sure they're going to go to heaven? The majority of them will tell you, I don't have that assurance. So a lot of them are Christian by name. You know, they know the Lord up here, you know, but he's not down here. And so... You know, we ended up uh, talking with her, and then I asked if we can give her a Bible. She says, uh, well, I have, I have many Bibles at home. I said, do you read Hebrew? She goes, oh, yeah, I read Hebrew perfectly. I said, do you have a Hebrew Bible? She said, no, I don't have a Hebrew Bible. No one has ever given me a Hebrew Bible before. So I said, well, I got a Hebrew Bible for you. So I went, uh, auto, uh, autographed it for her. Put some passages in there, and I ended up giving Vicky this Bible. Her perfect, her English was like absolutely perfect. And so I told her, I'm like, here's your Hebrew Bible. She said, nobody ever gave me a Hebrew Bible before with a New Testament. So I said, you read it, and that Bible will tell you, it will show you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, he said, in John 14, 6. He's the only way to salvation, the only way to eternal life. And, sh and she graciously uh, took that Bible from us. Then we ended up walking inside of the mall, and we went into a super farm. They're called super farm. They're pharmacies out here in Israel. We ended up going into the super farm. And there was a lady who was at the makeup area. You know, and she puts this stuff on your face and, you know, she shows you samples. She gives samples and stuff like that. And her name, her name is Iris. So um, we proceeded to talk with Iris and told her what we were doing in Israel. Told her how much God loves her, in that Hashem, the God of Israel, sent his son, Yeshua, to die for her sins and our sins. He was God, Passover lamb, his Pesach, Passover lamb, in that she can have the gift of eternal life, Metanah. That's how you say gift in Hebrew, Metanah, through Yeshua. And, I, and she said, that's just, that's great news. I said, it's wonderful news. I said, that's sababa. That's awesome news. I said, I would love to give you a Hebrew Bible. She said, sure. But when I went into my backpack, who oh, guess what? There wasn't a Bible. I only took two Bibles with me. So I said, I said, Iris, I said, can you wait right here? I'm going to run up uh, to the elevator, go down to the parking place, Get a Bible out of my car. She goes, no, listen, you don't really have to do that. I said, I want to do it. 
She goes, no, I, I really feel bad having you go all the way. I'm like, listen, don't worry about it. I want to give you the word of God. You need to read the truth concerning Yeshua. She says, I love your tenacity. I said, well, I appreciate that. I said, so we'll be right back. She said, if you want to, okay. So we ended up going back to the elevator, back down to parking level number two, back to the car, got a Bible. We ended up going back to the super farm. And she wasn't there. And I said, Patty, where is she? She says, I have no idea. So we're looking and there she was. But then now she has all these people, all these other customers. She's talking to them. I said, you know something? I said, this has to be a distraction from the devil. It has to be. So um, so we, we patiently waited. She finally saw us. But she didn't acknowledge us. So again, we're waiting. We're waiting, waiting. Then I noticed she ended up going around the corner. And so, uh, you know, your mind starts messing with you. Oh, she's trying to ignore you. She doesn't want to acknowledge you. She thinks you're trying to convert her or whatever. But I'm like, nah. I said, I'm waiting right here. She finally came on. She said, listen, I, I got other customers here. I said, you know something? You deal with those customers. You've got a job to do. I said, I'm going to wait right here. She said, are you sure? I said, Iris, I am absolutely positive. I'm going to wait right here until you're done. And she's just, she's looking at me like, wow, this guy's determined. Goes back. She's dealing with her customers. She finally came out and she said, I am so sorry. I'm like, you ain't got nothing to apologize about. You got a job to do. I said, I just want, the Lord's telling me to wait right here. Even if I had to wait for an hour, I wanted to make sure you got this complete Hebrew Bible. She said, I can't believe this. You've been waiting all this time. You run all the way back to your car. You come back here. You're waiting all this time as I'm dealing with customers so that you can give me a Bible. I said, absolutely. And I gave her a Bible, got a selfie picture with her and my wife. And she said, thank you so very much for your patience. And I said, Iris, I'm going to be praying for you. But I want you to read the scriptures. As Yeshua said in John 5, 39, search the scriptures. And that's what I'm asking you to do, to search the scriptures. Never mind what the rabbis say. Never mind what tradition says or the traditions of men. Yeshua said, search the scriptures. Because you will find eternal life in them when you call upon the name of Yeshua. And we gave her that Bible. So we passed out three of those Bibles today. Three Bibles. I have two more Bibles left. So right now, uh, we passed out 15 Bibles for the uh, eight days that we've been here. 15 Bibles. We passed out, my wife and I. We got two more Bibles. So hopefully by the grace of God, we'll be able to pass out those other two Bibles tomorrow. And if we can do that, that would bring the total to 17 Bibles. But right now, we're at 15 Bibles. Usually when Dr. Todd Baker and I, when Dr. Baker and I come to Israel, and I'm coming to Israel again in October with Todd Baker through Zola Levitt Ministries. They set up to share the gospel. We pass out between 65 and 70 Bibles. And so just being my wife and I, you know, we only passed out over 15 Bibles so far. And I'll tell you, it's just been absolutely phenomenal. God has just opened the doors. I mean, we're sharing the gospel with Jews, Israelis. We're sharing the gospel with Arabs. And the Holy Spirit of God has just really been uh, just tenderizing their hearts to be absolutely receptive to hearing this good news. You know, the soul went in Israel.
as nothing like a soul would in the United States. You just, you just can't walk up to a Jew here in Israel and say, and pass him a gospel track and say, if you were to die today, would you go to heaven and hell? I mean, you just can't do that out here. That's, just, that's absolutely foreign to them out here. You've got to approach them with wisdom. And you have to use your smarts. And you, you, you have to use Hebraic terms that they understand in order to uh, effectively communicate the gospel to them. You know, I mean, there have been guys that have come out here, they try to pull that militant soul and stuff like they do in America. And, you know, I, and I, I've heard stories of some guys getting their, their clocks cleaned out here. I know of one guy that got punched in the mouth, you know, because he approached an orthodox guy and, you know, if you die today, would you go to heaven or hell? Here's a gospel track, you know, and he got punched square in the mouth. You, you've got to use your smarts when you come to Israel. You've got to use common sense. Use common sense. Use Hebrew terms. Use Hebraic terms. Something that they're going to understand. And that's exactly what we do when we come to Israel. And it's just been so effective. And it's really, it's really been a blessing. Now, don't get me wrong. I've witnessed the orthodox Jews out here. You know? But you've got to use your brains. Okay? If you don't use your brains, you might get them knocked out. So, you know, just use them when you come to Israel. If you decide you want to uh, evangelize them and share the gospel with them. But, you know, since we've been doing this for a while now, I mean, Israelis have just been extremely open to the good news of the gospel. Well, then, my wife and I proceeded today to go to the Kotel, not the Kotel, the Kotel with a K. The Kotel is the Hebrew word for the Western Wall, or what Christians call the Wailing Wall. The Western Wall is a two- thousand year old retaining wall. It was a retaining wall during the second temple period. And when you go to the Wailing Wall today, you will notice on the wall, the first 11 layers from the ground up, the first 11 layers of the wall are Herodian. Now when I say Herodian, in other words, that wall dates back to the second temple period built on orders of Herod the Great. That's why we use the word Herodian. That wall stood in the time of Jesus 2,000 years ago. Now, many Christians believe that it was, it was part of the temple. No, it wasn't. It wasn't a part of the temple itself. It was only the that was around the temple. When the Romans destroyed Jerusalem in 70 A.D., I mean, they wiped out the temple. And not one stone of that temple could be found today. You ask any Israeli archaeologist who have done work around the Temple Mount area, they will tell you, you cannot find one trace of stone from the second temple. Now, that should not surprise you and I as students of Bible and Bible prophecy. Because remember what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 2? Seest thou not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left upon thee one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Jesus said, you're not going to find a stone from the temple. And today, you cannot find one single trace of the temple. Not one stone from the temple. So, you know, the Arabs, especially the Islamic law, who are the caretakers on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, they are the auspices of the Jordanian government. They have custodial rights to the Temple Mount, but sovereignty belongs to the Israeli government over the Temple Mount. So make no mistake about that. But those guys, they say, oh, you can't, you can't find not one stone of a temple. That means the temples never existed. Solomon's temple never existed. You Jews and Christians made that up. Herod's temple never existed. You Jews and Christians lie. 
You've made that up. There is no such thing called a temple. No Solomon's temple, no Herod's temple. But I would like to ask them, what do you call this place in Arabic? You know what they'll tell you? Oh, we call it Haram al-Sharif. And they say, translate Haram al-Sharif for me. You know what they'll tell you? Oh, Haram al-Sharif means the noble sanctuary. What sanctuary are you talking about? They need to go on the rock. What sanctuary are you talking about? Yeah, they'll know exactly what you're talking about. Because they always put their foot in their mouth. The reason why they call it in Arabic, Haram al-Sharif, the noble sanctuary, is because there was a sanctuary up there. There was a Jewish temple up there that existed during the second temple period. When Jesus walked the streets of this very city I'm in right now, 2,000 years ago, when he saw that temple mount, when he, when he was up on that temple mount, did he see a on the rock? No. He didn't even see a church. What he did see was a temple. And he taught in that temple, and he preached in that temple. And that's the reason why they call it in Arabic Haram al-Sharif, the noble sanctuary. Because there were, and by the way, there is an Arab document dated back to 1924 called Haram al-Sharif. You can order it on Amazon. Just type it, you know, in their search engine, Haram al-Sharif document, and you will receive a 1924 copy of a document of the Islamic law back then in 1924 in which they said, we do believe that the two Jewish temples stood on this very location. So the modern Muslim thinking today is that there were no temples. But the Muslims back in 1924, the Islamic law, who were then the custodians of the Temple Mount, Said that 1924 Arab document, there were two Jewish temples that occupied that place. So we have two disagreements here. I'm going to go with the guys in 1924 because they're right. As a matter of fact, go with the word of God because there were two Jewish temples. And for some reason, when the Romans destroyed Jerusalem, in 70 AD, they left that wall intact. And the reason why rabbis prayed that wall, my wife and I went to the wall we prayed today. The reason why the rabbis pray at that wall is because they say it was closest to the most holy place when the second temple stood. I know it's commonly called holy of holies. I like using the phrase the most holy place. Now, when you preach out of the King James for a long time, you know, I like using phrases from the King James. The most holy place. Or commonly called the Holy of Holies. And that's the reason why people from all over the world go to the Kotel. They go to the Western Wall. They write prayer requests. And they stuff them in the cracks of those walls. Knowing that Hashem God, the name, that's Hebrew, the name, Hashem, looks down from heaven upon that sacred piece of real estate and answers those prayers. Well, I ended up writing some names on a piece of paper, took a picture of that with the western wall behind me, notified some friends that we were praying for them, and stuffed that uh, paper in the cracks of that two thousand year old wall. Folks, you gotta come to Israel. You need to experience this land for yourself because there is nothing like this land. And that's the reason why I come out here about four times a year. Because I can never get enough of this land. Because Israel is the place of 
prophets, some place priests, some place of prophecy. And it's a place of promise. It's the center of the earth. I'm in Jerusalem tonight, the holy city of God. And yet Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 17 says that one day Jerusalem shall be called the throne of the Lord. Because one day, Menach Yeshua, King Jesus, is going to one day sit on David's throne in this very city and reign from that throne for 1,000 years. We know dogmatically it's 1,000 years because of what we read in Revelation chapter 20, verses 2 through 7. Where it tells us six times. Now, God says that's good enough for me. But when He says it six times, we better listen up. Six times He says 1,000 years. Now, you know, those guys who don't do their homework on this, they'll always try to second guess you and say, oh, the word millennium doesn't appear in the Bible. Why do you even use the word millennium? Did you just say Bible? Yeah. Well, what does the word Bible appear? Yeah, you just said Bible. The reason why we use the word millennia, it comes from two Latin words. Mele, thousand, anam, years. Mele, anam, thousand years. Millennia. Why do we use the word rapture? Well, it comes from the Latin Vulgate translation of the Bible that Jerome translated in the basement of the church of the Nativity of Bethlehem in the 16th century when he looked at that word caught up in first Thessalonians 4 17 he translated caught up as rapture that's where we get the English word rapture meaning to seize or snatch away one day the church will be seized snatched up and then seven years later, we come back with them to this very city. Not too far from where we are right now is the Mount of Olives. And Zechariah 14, 4 says, One day his feet shall touch the Mount of Olives, which is over here, Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives is going to split in half, toward the east, toward the west. That's the reason why you notice there are thousands of Jewish graves on the Mount of Olives. Why are they buried there? Because of Daniel 12, 2. And many that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some of the everlasting life, some of the shame and everlasting contempt. And of course, Zechariah 14, 4. The that when the Messiah comes, his feet will touch the Mount of Olives. They want to be there and be ready for resurrection. Well, if you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior and you die in your sins, well, you're not going to take part in that first resurrection, which is the resurrection that leads to life. You'll take part in the second resurrection, which is the second death that leads to an eternal life of life. So who knows how many Jews buried on the Mount of Olives are saved and how many of them are lost. Unfortunately, if I had to take a guess, a good majority of them are probably lost there on the Mount of Olives. You might have some saved in between. A lot of secret believers here in Israel. There are rabbis in Israel who are secret believers. Jews here that are secret believers. I've even heard of um, rumors about uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu being a secret believer. I don't know that. I mean, there's no evidence of that. You know, here's a Prime Minister that really loves to quote the scriptures. And great to see Kenny G in the room with us today. Jason Imsen from Louisiana with us. Karen McFadden. Good to see Karen McFadden there. Cindy says, thankful that you are back live since your phone was broke. My phone didn't break. My wife tried adding a WhatsApp on there. And when she tried doing that, I don't know what happened, but it, it wiped everything off my phone. Videos, pictures, uh, contact numbers. And so we're, we're finally trying to put everything back on it, but it just like, wiped everything out. So we, we really don't know. Um, 
But um, so the phone didn't break. It just it wiped, you know, my data clean. So it's slowly coming back, you know, getting all of our apps back and so on and so forth. So, um, so Kenny G, we're going to be praying for you, buddy. I, I heard about the situation involving your friend. I also had a friend this past March who committed suicide in Mississippi. Church guy, Christian guy. And, uh, you know, we just can't understand why people do something like that. But uh, it seems to be common in the United States. So uh, I know you're torn up about it, brother, but uh, we're, we're praying for you, man. So it's good to have Kenny G. Kenny G's been to Israel many times, and I've also evangelized with Kenny G out here uh, in Israel, sharing the gospel with the Jewish people. So it's great to have Brother Kenny G uh, in the room with us today. And so uh, that's pretty much all the time uh, that we have. I will come back again with another update, uh, Lord willing, at around 3.15 PM. Oh, by the way, I got to tell you, we were in the old city of Jerusalem, and we heard that they were going to have a laser light show in the old city tonight. And I'm like, I was wondering why they were setting all this thing, all these things up early in the day. And I said, Wow. I said, We need to stay here for this. So we did. And when eight o'clock came and it got dark, man alive, all these lights. Lasers, <clears throat> these projections coming around the wall. Yeah, I mean, Jerusalem lit up tonight. It was absolutely unbelievable. Now, I did take some video of it, and we're going to, you know, uh, put it up for you in a little while. But uh, man, it was just—it was just absolutely incredible, to say the least. You know, this is the second time I never saw the laser show. We, last year, when I took my tour group to Israel last March, we saw uh, a projector displayed on the walls of uh, ancient biblical characters and so on and so forth. <clears throat> it was phenomenal. We were in this like stadium type seating right inside the <clears throat> excuse me, right inside the King David Museum. Uh, uh, tonight was just a laser show, and man, it was phenomenal. There were people, uh, girls walking around on the stilts. Lit up in like an angel costume with illuminated angel wings. I mean, it was just, it was just unbelievable. It was, and that there were thousands of people there, thousands of people. And so, man, it was, it was just absolutely awesome uh, to be there. And so, like I said, we'll come with another uh, update tomorrow. So stand by for that. And again, I want to appreciate all of you uh, praying for us over there back in the states. Praying the Lord opens the doors for us as we share the gospel that Jews out here. We have one more day here in Jerusalem, and I'm going to teach Bible prophecy at certain locations out here. So I'm hoping that we can do that and then pass out these remain, remaining Hebrew Bibles that we have. And so thank you for your prayers. Thank all of you for your financial support in, in helping us share the good news. Of the gospel, but before you go, I know Travis Cobble loves when I uh, pray the Aaronic blessing in Hebrew out of Numbers 6 24 through 26. He says, Every time I pray that, <clears throat> he says, Something good always happens to him. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, and this is the Aaronic priestly blessing because. When I do that, for you Star Trek fans, you know what I'm talking about? This forms the 21st letter in the Hebrew alphabet, the Hebrew letter Sheen. Looks like a fancy looking W. And so I form it like this, like a double Sheen. So I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to bless all of you watching right now, you, your families, with the Aaronic Priestly Blessing out of number 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee, the Lord keep thee, the Lord make his face shine upon thee, and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, and give thee peace. Give thee shalom. 
we bless you here from the holy city of Jerusalem, the eternal capital of the Jewish state of Israel. This is August Rosado coming to you from the holy city of Jerusalem, saying, look up, Jesus is coming soon, and Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the holy city that we're in right now. And we'll talk to you guys tomorrow night. God bless. Have a great day. Bye-bye.